Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you probably the easiest way to preserve your apples for long-term use and that is to dehydrate them. What is nice about dehydrating is that it is an easy way to process your apples, it tastes great, they last for a really long time, you can even add water back to the dehydrated apples to use it for later cooking dishes. Now when it comes to dehydrating apples, Really any apple will work just great, but I prefer to use more of a tart apple, especially if we're going to dehydrate them because it really brings out the flavors as it's dehydrated. Now there's a couple ways of dehydrating. Some people, when they cut the apple, they like to soak it in some sort of like juice or solution so it, the apples don't brown as quickly. Well, I've found that it's, I don't feel like that's really necessary, so I don't do that. But if you do want to do that, what you'll need to do is cut your apples up, put it in a cup of lemon juice with a cup of water, Soak it for about 10 minutes and then you're ready to dehydrate. Now for temperature setting, this one here has settings of 135 or 145. I like to dehydrate my apples at 145. Seems to do a really nice job, whereas this one here has no temperature setting. You basically just turn the thing on and, and off it goes. Now timing of how fast the dehydrate can take like six to nine to 10 hours, depending on the thickness of the apples, uh, how many apples you have in the dehydrator and the temperature of the dehydrator. So it's good to make a test batch or two to see how the dehydrator will work with your apples. It's also a good idea to make sure you've got plenty of time to kind of babysit the dehydrator the first couple times you use it. So that way you know how long it's going to take to dehydrate the apples. Now, to know when the apples are done is a really big question. So what I like to do is crack open the dehydrator every once in a while and check it. So if they've got a little bit of a flex to it, uh, as long as they're not really sticking together or real sticky, you can actually tear it apart and kind of look inside and see like, yeah, that's, that's getting pretty close. Another tip that I would say is to, if you think that it's close, is to lay it out on the drying rack and let it cool. So as the chips cool, you'll be able to get a better gauge on if they are done or not. Now when it comes to laying them out on the actual dehydrator board, I like to spread them all out. Make sure that they're not touching inside of the dehydrator racks. Now after they've cooled off a little bit, it's time to store them. And I do this in three different ways. We're going to be eating them fairly quickly. I'll just simply put them in a Ziploc bag like this. If we're gonna do a little bit longer storage, I like to put them in mason jars. If you've got a food sealer that can seal the lids on these jars, that's a great way of storing it, and it just looks nice out on your counter. Now, if I'm doing long-term storage, what I like to do is put them in a vacuum sealer like this. This is about probably two apples worth. And then I seal it up, stick in the freezer, and this is good for a really long time. Now, the thing about dehydrating apples is it takes a lot of apples to get an end product like this. It's about six pounds of apples per one pound of dehydrated apple. And on each rack that I have in my dehydrators, it only can hold about one to two apples depending on the size. So this can be a fairly lengthy process, but definitely pays out in the end. Now for more information, tips, tricks on how to grow your apples, head over to starkrose.com.